Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Over the past two episodes we've gotten this Paging 3 implementation up and running here for the Rick and Morty episodes that we are paging from the public API. If you're just dropping in on this video and haven't seen the last two, I'll put a card in the top right so you can catch up because this is going to continue building off of what we've done so far. And in today's episode, I want to talk about adding headers or some kind of separators inside our list here. So if we actually take a look at the different layers here, right? We have our epoxy controller, we have the view model, and then we have our paging source. And these three things kind of work together to get this entire paging list up and running. As you can see here, we've defined a particular type, the paging source int to episode, int for our keys for the paging library to work properly, and then episode, basically what we are bubbling up outside of this paging source for some other layer to use here. And as you can see here, we get our episode page, and then we go ahead and map the results from that re response into a particular episode via our domain mapper. If we then look further up here, uh, we don't actually have anything to find here, but if we actually go ahead and look at our implementation of the paging data epoxy controller, we have a particular type, and that type is an episode. So this is all coming together, and this all works because we've defined the same structure, the same data, the same type that's being surfaced from our data layer all the way up to our view model layer, and then eventually displayed inside of our epoxy uh, view layer here. So we don't have too much wiggle room in the sense of modifying exactly what we have at this moment in time, right? We're basically being told, hey, we have to build a, an epoxy model given a current position and an item, which at this point is an episode. So what the Paging3 library allows us to do is actually manipulate our data in the process or under the hood to allow us to basically inject particular data structures or data models or whatever pieces of information we need inside of our uh, flow that then will eventually be bubbled up to our epoxy controller, to our view implementation, however we do that. So it's actually unbelievably easy here. If we just click dot map on our flow here, we have a whole bunch of stuff available to us here. So if we say it dot insert, Look at this, we have multiple functions here to insert separators, to insert a food, footer item, and even a header item. Something that is just fantastic to see as a developer so we don't have to be doing any kind of hacky sort of combination of certain things to get particular separators or particular items injected inside of our data that is being displayed on the screen here. So if we take a look here, the insert separator function will take in or pass in two particular episodes here, of course nullable, but basically the episode before and the episode after, whatever section in the UI we're looking at here, and then we can return any. So we can return null if we don't want to add a separator between them, otherwise we can actually return some data to eventually describe a particular separator. So an obvious thing that I'm thinking of here is we have this little season episode kind of thing up in the right hand corner here and so we can see season 01, episode 01, all the way down here to season 01, episode 11, and then we go to season 02, episode 01. So instead of it just being displayed in the UI how it is currently, I think it's pretty appropriate to be able to inject a particular season you know, header inside here much like we do inside the characters where we have this little header that says main family and then everything starts alphabetical here with our A and then B, etc. So a header that looks, I'm gonna copy the same exact header, but a header nonetheless inside of our paging three implementation here. So the only problem is with our current implementation, the paging source is defined as int to episode, our epoxy controller is defined as the parameter as type being an episode, so we don't have much flexibility here to handle multiple different types of information that we will then, inside of this build item model, we will then depict, you know, okay, is this particular item of type episode? If it is, then we'll return this. If it's of type item separator, then we'll return a different model, etc. So we need a way to go ahead and demonstrate that, so let's build out a little bit of a class to do so here. 
So we're just going to create a new class in here. We're going to call it um, episode, let's go with episodes UI model. I am not in love with this class or this name at all, but we're just going to run with it here. And what we can do is make use of the Kotlin sealed class here to basically depict different types of this uh, ep episodes UI model that we will then be able to distinguish at some other point in time. So let's add a particular item in here. This is going to basically represent the uh, episode that we have at the moment. So we can add in the episode here. And then this, of course, needs to extend our episodes UI model. And then inside here, we can have another one that says, uh, let's go with header. And we'll just need text here for that, right? We just need basically the header text, the string. And then this, of course, is also going to uh, extend our episodes UI model. So with this kind of a structure here, we're able to define a single class, the episodes UI model as basically what we're going to be bubbling up, what we're going to be passing from our paging source to our view model all the way up to our epoxy controller. But we can say if this episode's UI model is an item or is a header, do something differently. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. If we update this implementation here, we can, I'm gonna also update this one here because it's gonna freak out if I don't. We will make the episode's UI model the type here and then we can very easily say instance of the header we are going to go ahead and return a different element here so we can cast this as the, like the episode but it's going to be text header text specifically uh, doo -doo -doo, header and then text I've gone ahead and created just a very simple uh, episode list title epoxy model class here the layout for it is exactly what we saw on the characters page. So nothing new here, but we are just going to take this and paste it in here and say header text. And then we will add an ID to it because I will not make that mistake twice. And then we'll do header underscore header text as the ID here. So that should do it for our UI implementation, which is quite nice here. However, if we take a look at the rest of our implementation, it clearly is not up and running here. So we need to update this quite simply here. So we're going to change our paging source to be the episodes UI model. We're gonna also change the type here to be the episodes UI model, and then this is going to freak out. So we are going to need to update this. This is going to be quite straightforward to do this here. So we're going to have to, inside of our uh, map here so let's say response just to be a little thorough then we're just going to say episodes UI model dot item and we will pass in exactly that so uh, outside of updating our episodes UI model yep and that's about it. We've gone ahead and updated our paging source implementation. So if you didn't catch that really before we were mapping the results, which is a list of the get episode by ID response, uh, basically our network response here, we were just setting it or mapping that value for that list of network responses to a list of domain models. But instead we have to, you know, wrap it inside of this object here, the episodes UI model dot item which on the inside of the item has the episode, the domain model that we're looking for here. So that is pretty quick to change over. That was uh, pretty painless. And then inside here, just gonna run this function again because it'll change it for me. But yeah, is this gonna freak out if I, that's really weird. I'm gonna maybe try to let's just condense that to like model or model two, okay. And then we have our little bit of logic that we're gonna have to put in place there. 
but otherwise where we actually make use of this flow we can collect the latest, which is not going to be a paging data of episode anymore. It is going to be a paging data of episodes UI model. Okay, I'm almost convinced this is just a little IDE hiccup here. It says change type from paging data of type episodes UI model to paging data of type episodes UI model. I'm so thoroughly confused right now. What um, What's happening? <laughs> it's telling me to change it, and it is what I is already saying to change it to. So. Let's go ahead and just try to run this really quickly. Okay, so this went away here after I guess I was leaving this insert separators function open, uh, but I, if for now we're just gonna return null, meaning we are not in inserting a separator in between our particular items, and it seems like the error has gone away here, so that is quite nice to know. Everything else should be up and running here. I'm just gonna go ahead and run the project just to make sure. We'll go ahead and obviously test this out so that we are not missing anything. And yeah, it looks like we are still paging as we normally would and uh, nothing else has broken along the way. So I did want to implement this function here, these separators, but I think this has gone on a little bit here because I kind of explained what we were going to do in the beginning of the episode. So I think I'm going to break it here. We'll go ahead in the next episode and actually implement this because we are going to have to come up with a little bit of logic to determine if we should add a separator between the two elements and, and parse all that out and stuff like that. So I don't want to jam that in this episode. So I will catch you guys in the next one. If you have made it this far and you have been enjoying the content, please do leave a like. It'll help me and the channel out and hopefully you've learned a thing or two along the way. If you notice you are not subscribed and have been enjoying the content, also consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.